fantastic audience in the house tonight. Sure. Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald's going to be part of the show. We are blessed. Absolutely looking forward to having the Collingwood coach, <laughs> fresh from the MCG, Nathan Buckley. In the yeah. Yeah. We've never, we knew he's on the show tonight, obviously. We've never barracked so hard for oh Collingwood. Oh, God. Could, it would have made. Oh, uh, I think at one stage we were singing the song. I <laughs> and that's unheard of, because uh, we wanted him to come in and be in a good mood. Exactly. And, yeah, a hell of a game, too. I mean, it, it, that was one of the best. And on display, nearly ran them down, listen, didn't it? Didn't Crazy scenes, the umpires let it go. There's some con controversial umpiring. There's some absolute heroics. I mean, there's some fantastic stuff. We'll uh, obviously spend a lot of time talking to Nathan Buckley about it. will, and just, but just a great result. You know what I mean? A win for the little guy. And yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mickey, you say all the good things were on display, and, yes. and that's true to a degree, but there were some scenes after the game, and unfortunately... Let's not dwell so, on this. Well, we won't dwell on it. We'll speak to Bucks a little bit later, but Scotty Pendlebury was booing when he won the Anzac Day medal, and the coach had something to say about it after the match. I, so I don't mind booing as part of the... Part of the, the theatre the the of the game, yep, yep, so you, yep. can, you laugh, you cry, you cheer, you boo. Sustained booing after the facts is probably not a, <laughs> a great look. In, in the Essendon fans' defence, I can imagine how emotional they might be at that stage. So, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to be booed. What's it like, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that's talk, actually... Talk me through it. How, well, I've how been do a, you go? I've been, a couple of your <laughs> I've been on a couple of your comedy festival shows. <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> oh, I didn't realise we gave half ticks. So... <laughs> Tell you what, can I say something? It's always a bad sign for you when he gets off a big laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I prefer it when they boo him. I really do. No, I really do. Sort of no. uh, More on right, later, look, eh? So, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, we you, will later. You yeah, know yeah, there's yeah. an election brewing uh, when both... Uh, Leaders. Yeah, of <laughs> and of course, uh, up in Sydney, there's ScoMo on the other side uh, the releasing his inner pants. Have a look, and that's going to cost him votes. <laughs> wow! Wow! What a what a cox plate field it is. Eh? <laughs> um, hey, hey, we'll get. We're, we're going to spend a whole lot of time with Nathan Buckley talking yeah. about that game uh, and sure. Buckley's stellar career on the way yeah. through. But it sort of kicked off a bit last night, didn't it? I mean, it's become a real feature of the Anzac Day celebration, the Eve game between Richmond and Melbourne. And your it Tigers is. were sensational again last night. Tigers up and about. Night. We're keeping a lid yeah. on it. I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Cochin's going to have to come back through the twos. <laughs> um, I didn't think the Ds were too bad. Uh, they, 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 hit a, they hit the target quite often. It's just a shame that target was Vlosten. <laughs> Um, I thought it was fantastic to watch. What you about enjoy? the... Yeah, I, no, yeah, I love... Who doesn't, who doesn't love Wednesday Night Football? But um, the... Uh, <laughs> you're, you had a... There was a surprise packet for those who hadn't seen as much of Richmond as... Oh, uh, you've got another one. Yeah, well, there's another one. Uh, well, Stack. Sydney uh, Stack. Sydney Stack. He's a young superstar. The crowd love him. They were cheering him off to the bench. He's captured the hearts and minds of the Richmond fans. Uh, but not only that, some of the coaching staff as well. It's funny, we're probably summing up Sydney's game. He's slowly become a fan favourite. He's taken a hanger, he's did a massive bump and he's kicked a torpedo. I'll be building a statue of him across the road. <laughs> sure. here's Richmond Baker. And here are the uh, above mentioned, there's the hanger. It's an absolute ripper. It was a top grab and there's the top. There's the top. <laughs> out, of, out of defence, which you have to admire. Uh, that's a fantastic... And coming up, this is the moment of the match for me, and bang. Oh, that is a ferocious bump, and uh, that's Viney. That's not lowering in fruit. That's one of the toughest players yeah, in the competition, bar yeah. none. Yep. So there is a lot to like A lot there, to like about him, I agree. And uh, exciting times. Can I just so. say, I'm not in, all in uh, on Sydney Stack as you are, because I see those three things, and I think, should have punched from behind? <laughs> <laughs> Torpy kick to a contest? <laughs> and that bump he should have tackled. So... Jury's still out for now. <laughs> <The, yeah. laughs> what is wrong with you? No, well, can I just say... The romance of the game and the magical moment. Like I said, I love Wednesday Night Football more than anyone. But <laughs> I don't think the round's long enough, you know what I mean? I don't think it, sh it should go from Monday to Sunday. Um, You're on record. Hey, can, can I point out to you that he actually lived with... Hardwick for he, a did. While, since he did. He did. He did moved in. He did, um, yeah. So the coach has a special relationship yeah. with him, obviously. I remember um, my daughter uh, had some friends over and she made like a, I don't know, one of those 
plates sort of thing with you know, salami and all that on and all <laughs> cheeses and all that sort of thing. And the next day I see him out the back around the pool and he's got the same thing by himself. <laughs> it's like he's just one of those sort of guys. But, no, I, I, Jack Rewalt prefers chicken wings. But... <laughs> Um, hey, wherever there's a... <laughs> it's good, I like it, I like it. That's a victory sip from you, well done. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, for every... take the rest no. of the night off, I think. Oh. <laughs> for every winner, there's a loser. Oh, mate. What? There's a... oh, what, what is going on with Melbourne? them? Well, they are in massive trouble. Well, they were really almost struggling. flag favourites. I think champion data at the start of the season had them rated the oh. number one side. So locked for the top four, they were at the start. They were. I haven't, seen them, I haven't seen them uh, this bad since the preliminary final of last year. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Um, and then the decade before that. Uh, so are we really that surprised, by the way? Well, some people are. Uh, they're the going to put, they're the going. problem was last night, in the second half especially, they couldn't score. Um, mm. they, they, don't, they didn't seem to have any forwards. Yeah. In saying that, they do have one good forward. Unfortunately, he's playing for Fremantle at the moment. <laughs> uh, Jesse, Hogan, Jesse Hogan, I'd argue, is in career best form. Um, have a look at him here. Do you reckon they could have done with him last night, Murray? Oh, the clunker. He's just, of course they could have. I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons as to why he's no longer in Melbourne football. But, boy, the, I mean, he's a super player, enormous talent. He'd been a good player for them. And, he's, you know, the worst, the, the sad thing for Melbourne is that he's exactly the sort of player they mm. could do with in the moment. He's wearing another club's colours. So, I, I, off the back of it, they've, they've got to reassess where they're at at the moment. I was interested to see that their coach, Simon Goodwin, has decided to give the group four days off. Yeah, as opposed to the four quarters they had off <laughs> uh, <laughs> last night. We don't like to be it's a new fresh approach. We don't like to be glass half uh, empty on this show. We like to focus on the positives and there are a couple of fantastic stories rolling around in the competition at the moment. St Kilda, I mean for what a about moment, this? They, they were momentarily on top of the ladder uh, last right. week, which was hard to believe given what the pre-season sort of forecast like. And Port Adelaide, they've invested so heavily in youth Port Adelaide. And they are flying. So, you know, we, we like to focus on the positives. No, no one would have predicted St Kilda, by the way, would be second on the ladder. No ladder. way, no. The only one who did it was Paddy McCartan, and that's because they thought he was concussed at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they are flying, aren't they, Mitt? They're they really flying. Are. As long as they don't get ahead of themselves. Yeah. I think that's the most important factor oh. here, because you can see when a team gets ahead of themselves... So Jack Steele, for instance, I yep. saw him being interviewed the other day. I think he's keeping a lid on it. Uh, the key is not to say finals. You wouldn't mention finals. Do whatever you do, don't mention finals. <laughs> Jack, are we uh, allowed to buy into the Saints hype yet? Oh, I think so. I think we've um, don't mention finals. had four good wins this year, including two wins in the, in the pre-season. So... Um, I think we've proved that we're a good side in the competition. Don't mention finals. No. Don't, don't. No. no chance of finals. No! Oh, no! What's he done? What has he done? April. Let, mark that moment. Time oh. code that moment. That is the moment that St Kilda's season went off the rails right oh. hey, has that been done? Uh, Much has been made of the, uh, the, the additions to the coaching staff. Terms of Brett Ratner especially. I think yep. Brendan lays down there. But they had a new one uh, just last week too. The new forwards coach down there as was announced. Dermot Brereton. Correct, yep. uh, The new forwards coach at St Kilda. Easy to see why uh, they'd appoint him uh, to that position after his efforts on Fox Footy last, last week. The Dockers were brave, I thought, in the end. Oh, brave, you know, not well, a great... Well, they kept coming, script. didn't they? They did. They just didn't have enough polish in the first two and a half quarters. Yes. That sound analysis from the new yeah, no. St Kilda assistant coach down there, Carl Drago. <laughs> Drago. Um, but, yeah, Demet was down there and, uh, you know, take, uh, taking the forwards. And, yeah. and he's already made an impact. Have a look at him here. <laughs> he's taught him how to take a hanger over it. That's... Uh, I mean, he'll be great down there, No, he would be fantastic. No, he's a great teaching coach and uh, players walk a bit taller around him. Hey, I'd expected from him, we're about eight or nine minutes into the show, I'd expected from Feels him, longer. But I expect... <laughs> <laughs> but I expect better from you. I think you've, you've buried the lead. you buried the what lead. What is it? Well... Carlton. Da, da, oh, da, da, da. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Carlton had a win last week. Fair call, Carlton. Yeah. Carlton won a game of footy last week. And Good to see them on the scoreboard. And yeah. I think it was one of those moments where years from now you'll go... I remember where I was when Carlton. <laughs> Carlton won a, won a game. Do you yeah. remember where you were? Do I remember I was? At, well, actually. Uh, oh, do you? Yeah, out, well, <laughs> out of habit, I'd left at three quarter time. So I wasn't, actually, I, wasn't, I wasn't actually there, but I tell you, I knew. Like, we, Come we, on, we, give your team a wrap. That was, no, that was no, a no, good win. Fantastic, absolutely. They broke 100 for the first time in. Uh, 1,051 days. So. <laughs> They should have held up the ball there just to, uh, to, to, to signify it. But also, as a Carlton supporter, I knew that we were going to win. 
When Levi Casbolt did this, um, uh, when he actually kicked the drop punt, uh, that was an amazing moment, and um, that'll always be known as the Casbolt pocket to me. <laughs> Uh, and I tell you, that's the reaction you want from your coach, by the way, isn't it? Have a look at him. Just stunned, stunned to the point where he actually can't move. Mate, we are back. It's a great it's, day. Looks like he's dancing the Paso Doble or something <laughs> over there. Oh, so. You're happy for us, aren't you? We're the traditional rivals, Carlton Richmond, you want us back at the pointy end of the table so we can... Oh, it's just great to get the points, Andy. I'm, you know, I've been in your corner for some time oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, the, the it was good to see. No, it was great to see. The stories aren't all good, of course, in a weekend of footy, and um, unfortunately on Easter Monday, Monday, and it's carried on again today, but there was the unseemly booing of Gary Ablett, which for one of the absolute champions and icons of the game, this sort of came from nowhere a bit in the Hawthorne game last week, and much discussed, wasn't it? Well, I, yeah, it's not unusual for good players to be booed by opposition fans. No, that is true. No, so that is, that is why true. is this so special? And Gary, well, uh, Gary Ablett too, by the way, he's pretty thick-skinned. You know, I, mean? I don't think that level of booing is going to bother a man, considering... Uh, if you compare it to the treatment and the reception that he received uh, by Suns fans last year mm. when he returned to the Gold Coast. Yeah, seven years, they say. Why didn't you finish out your million-dollar contract, hey? Welcome back, Gaza. You're dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty... <laughs> Pretty strong. Pretty strong. It doesn't get much stronger. She should come out and say what she thinks, <laughs> that, that woman. I, look, I think that's fantastic. But look, you want to be careful with Geelong fans because they're fiercely loyal <laughs> oh, this is to true. Gary Ablett. And one of my favourites are a guy down there <laughs> called Teach. Uh, he won't stand for any booing of his players. I'll certainly be people, in people's faces. Anybody criticises Gary Ablett. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. When we come back fresh from the MCG today, coach of the Gold Coast. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thanks for the very fresh down the Everybody's got a story to tell about the night in the Rose Hotel, I reckon. Pengy, you're looking at me like I'm an idiot. Hey, one of the things that you love doing just, on... That's the... just my normal look, by the way. <laughs> one of the things we love on this show, I particularly do, is your critical eye that you cast over the commentary. You can't oh, about, about, about what you like when it comes to the commentary team. Well, some of us have to keep an eye on it. You no, know, they keep, you know, commentators like you accountable. <laughs> um, but uh, I just I did notice that um, just pointed it. Actually, yeah, I pointed. I'm sorry. Access to the rooms. It's never. There's never been more access, uh, no. especially when it comes sure. to more welcoming with family and friends. And beautiful moment in the Richmond rooms last week with uh, David Asprey. <laughs> That's his name. David yeah. Asprey's his name. Yep. And um, I thought Luke Darcy and Richo captured the family atmosphere of the Richmond rooms <laughs> absolutely perfectly. Great family atmosphere in the rooms, Richo. It's always a pleasure on a Saturday night to be standing in here. That's David Asprey. Is that his young fellow or not? No, not his uh, young fellow. <laughs> Just to point out, uh, it, not as a, not as cute when it's not your kid. And the parents would like that child back, Dave. So. I think moment, moments later, Dylan Grimes came and punched that kid away from the game. Hey, but um, the other one too is um, yes. Tom Stewart from Geelong. Oh, okay. what a surprise yeah. packet he's been. Yes, he he's been a surprise packet. Yes, he has. Um, and yes. this Hamish McLaughlin analogy, uh, this caught my ear. Think about what a good pickup Stewart has become. Brookie so drafted. It's like ordering a small pizza and getting a family. Good value. <laughs> no, right. Yeah. Mate, it's like Hamish, he's nailed it again. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so you know what? Know, what? When, when, it comes, when it comes to Tom Stewart, I prefer him without anchovies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> 
Oh, no. That's not a celebratory one, sure. Uh, that, by the way, I thought Hamish McLaughlin nailed it, but absolutely nailed it. But that's him trying to connect with the hoi polloi, do you know what I mean? I'm talking about pizzas. Uh, to put it in McLaughlin terms, it's like, um, you know, it's like ordering one Argentinian polo player <laughs> and then a whole team of polo players. Right. Or, or if you're Gil, you order like, you book one au pair for the night. <laughs> Anyway, you see what I'm doing? Player access. Player access has been uh, part of the conversation this week, of course, with um, with the. Are across the line, are they well, crossing well, the line? Well, I want to know where the line is. I want you to ask me, and I want to know. I'm going to throw to the controversial moment where Abby Holmes, our very own, interviewed Luke Hodge up at the Gabba last week. Was this crossing the line? Abby, you're with Hodge. Standing right next to Luke Hodge. Hodge, a little bit of a scare through the camp. Was that a hammy or just a bit of cramp? Cramp. Yep. Collingwood seem to just be getting on top around the contest. Do you need to mix anything up around the footy or change anything up structurally? Uh, not really. Just give away. They got a couple of easy check goals. No, is, she, is she too close? Well, some people said that it, she was. But she's that close. Trainers started working on her calves. <laughs> <laughs> That's too close. That is too close. I thought it was fine. Are you okay with it? What what do you think? Yeah? No. 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 Mind you, modern players shouldn't shouldn't complain because back in the day, uh, the the, the old guys gave them complete access to all Have a look at Gary Abbott Senior. The access to him. Well, Gary, your second grand final. You must be looking forward to next week. Yeah, Jared, it's great to be back um, in the grand final. It's been three years since we made it last time, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Who do you think your uh, opponent will be next week? I've got no idea. How's the bath? <laughs> it's beautiful and hot. OK, enjoy it and uh, turn it on for us next week. Thanks, Jared. Ah, that's fantastic. You know, the <laughs> right. weird thing about that, Nick, that was at Gary Ablett's house. <laughs> 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 Look and learn, yeah, roaming so. Brian. <laughs> hey, um, one man is one man is always given unfettered access. Been a fantastic uh, media. Um, given us great access in the media right through his playing days, was part of the media for a while and now as a coach of the Collingwood Football Club. Right. Fresh from the so happy to have him here. Please make him welcome, Mr. Nathan Bates. Yes. <laughs> Good. How, How good. good. It's, How we're good. all very, very excited. The crowd's Bucks. excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right off the, what? off the back of Anzac Day, so many questions. Um, yeah. The atmosphere. What was it like to see Birds of Tokyo <laughs> live? <laughs> Was it unbelievable? I missed them, mate. We were downstairs. So, what? Um, so you don't know if they played anything off the new album? Uh, no, no idea. No idea. Well, what if we haven't got him on for? Uh, the <laughs> hey, Bucks, thank you for coming in, firstly, on such a big day. You've been involved in a lot of Anzac Day clashes now as, as player, uh, in the media, and a, as coach. Just before we, we get into it, can you tell us what it means to you, what it means to the players, uh, what an important day it is? Um, well, it's it's a huge a huge occasion. Yep. Um, as I mentioned today, my old man, the closest connection I have is mm. Dad went to um, Vietnam for seven months in 67, 68. Um, and we went back there for four days in 2010. Uh, so to be able to do that with Dad and to get a sense of what it was and how it affected the rest of his life. About a, a few times, but um, your first time publicly. But the, 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 the longer I've gone on and being involved in it, the more connected I've been because I've understood my dad more. So mm. I think it's a significant day and we're very lucky to, to be yeah. able to play on it. We got one befitting the day today. I mean, it was a phenomenal, it was a it was a phenomenal contest back and forth. Yep. The last 90 seconds, I mean, the further the game wore on, the more... It when you're sitting on the other side of the white line or in the coach's box of course. to, um, to criticise and say, well, why don't you go there and why didn't you do that? Um, but the actual, you know, being out there under that sort of pressure, that sort of fatigue, I mean, these guys get paid well and they, and they, they do a, um, a lot of work to prepare for these moments. They're not perfect, no, no one is, but no. geez, they do it pretty well. Oh, yeah. They do. Speaking of moments that uh, weren't handled perfectly. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> no, I didn't. And we're into it, Bucks. It's good. Be. <laughs> you can go anywhere from here, mate. No, no. That, that's I, the I, niceties I, out of I'm the way. <laughs> We talk about, about Bucks' history with this game. Well, exactly. You, play, you played in the first one in 1995. Now, we're, this... We're trying to get Dave Grinvold on the show. 
Wow, do you reckon we'll be able to get him? <laughs> not now, not after this <laughs> report. Um, why, what do you think... Um, do you want to just set the record straight, just for once? And I think you're a hard done by them. I've never been asked this question before. <laughs> um, I think Seth should have taken that mark. That's there. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. he let you down. Well, I think he'd already kicked nine that day. Had he? He had, and yes. he did. And he, uh, he had some really, you know, his best games were against Seth and seemed to stand up against him all the time. But... Yeah, I don't know why he couldn't get the job done. That day there, that, that's, <laughs> that's the first one there. Did you know, did you know then that, that, that the day would become what it has been? No. No, it was um, obviously the first time that, that that game had taken place and Sheed was big on um, on that had, and had you know, the marquee games and, and trying to push Essendon into those. And uh, 25 years later, we're still going and you know, obviously another great day today for so us. So g- given what the day has become for footy and yeah. the broader community... Was that why you were so angry about the treatment of Scott Pendlebury? Oh, no, that, that's no. I actually, look, I, I don't, I don't believe in booing. Right. Yep. Full stop. I think cheer as loud for your your team as you possibly can. And I actually made a mistake because I said shame on you for booing a champion. It's not booing a champion. It's just booing mm. anyone, yeah, yeah. like anyone at any stage. But um, yeah, I was a bit rolled up at that point. Um, it's not the time to take a, you know, necessarily to take that stand, but. You know, Pendles has been a gun of the game, and, and I'm, you know, Collingwood supporters have a crack as hard as anyone. So emotions were running high <laughs> at, at, at that point. Oh, yeah, that. Fair to say, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Uh, are you going to say that another ten times tonight? <laughs> you, uh, you were booed a fair bit as a player. A little bit, yeah. um, I know a couple of guys who used to do that. They're idiots, but they're idiots. Uh, <laughs> um, so, obviously, like, as a player, were you, were you booed by your own supporters once? You must have some intel. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, I got booed by everyone. Let's get that straight. You're a um, including, including Collingwood people. Yes. The, I started in 94. I signed a three-year contract. So we're getting the back half of 96, and everyone thinks I'm going to go play for Port Adelaide, including the Collingwood fans. So yeah. I was running around playing for Collingwood, getting booed by Collingwood. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so it's quite a sensitive oh, it's topic. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you, you, we'll, we'll talk to you in a minute about coaching. If it wasn't, I think you, you lost to in the media now. I thought we were going to get you in the media, but mm. I think you're going to be coaching for some time. And it's been a long career in, in the media, and you started very young. Do you remember appearing on a little program called yeah. AFL Squadron? Yeah. <laughs> Hosted by Gary Lyon. You, do you remember that? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, I'm going I'm, I'm to refresh your memory. <laughs> as uh, kick back and enjoy uh, <laughs> this searing, insightful uh, exchange of ideas. Morning, boys and girls, and welcome once again to the Coca-Cola AFL Squadron Show. Now, this morning we've got one of the real superstars of the AFL, Nathan Buckley here. How are you, Nathan? Good, thanks, Gary. Good to have you along, mate. Sensational to be on such a... uh, a Top rating. Top rating program. Yeah, thanks very much for that. Uh, We we, (laughs) did. You you know you're in (laughs) trouble. You know you're in trouble when Gary Lyons finishing your sentences, don't you? <laughs> what was he like when he when you when did you ex, just describe the atmosphere? Was, was he a showbiz asshole even at that stage? What was going on? Actually, it looked like it looked like emotions were running pretty high in that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd describe it as dry. <laughs> um, who would have known that I would have had the foresight that this was going to come up some 20 years later, so not to take it you know, too seriously and just say top-rated show. Top-rated show. What did you really want? Do you remember what you wanted to say? Um, no. No. <laughs> um, you, we're wasting... Well, we love our bar, but we're wasting you over there. Can you come and join us over here on the other uh, side? Yeah, no, 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 Hey, Bucks, what's the problem with door stopping, mate? Mate, I just don't appreciate it. Oh, we're just trying to do mate, a job. Just because we spoke about it on Monday, just let me go. Alright. Sam, can I just ask you how the door stop went with Bucks? Scoop, now's not the time, mate. Did you get what you wanted out of him? Mate, no question, that's it. <laughs> no, mate, he doesn't want to talk. Mate, he slammed the door on me. Cut that go, mate. 
This is in the time. I'm on the phone. This is the time. This is the time, mate. It's a simple question. Yes or no? I can't answer it. Mick, why didn't you get anything out of Sam? Oh, mate, he wasn't giving me anything, okay? It wasn't my fault. But that's your job. Okay, mate. All right, you made a point. You're better than this, Bucks. Mate, you've got to give me something. Stop it, mate. I'll be sacked, mate. It's my job. Get stuck, Bucks. Before Brisbane and Collingwood, though, North were the ones that were. Uh, you haven't got long enough. <laughs> you really haven't got long enough to go through oh, all this. But there was a, there were a few machinations that took place. And did they offer you ten thousand dollars cash to go to? North? They gave it to me. They oh, they gave it to you. Yeah. Well, already I don't believe your story. North don't have ten thousand. <laughs> I would say this though, because, uh, because there was a lot of noise surrounding you before you even got here. But in 1992, you had a big, a big uh, year in the Sandful, mm. and then you were, you know, you were coming to, to hot the, property, hot property, North Collingwood, Brisbane, and then I would argue that you handled it um, pretty casually, by the way, <laughs> considering when you were doorstop and asked oh. about, you were asked about where you were going next year in the VFL, <laughs> mate. Um, yeah, pretty casual. <laughs> Nathan Buckley knew nothing of the report on The Australian this morning, which claims he'll play for the Brisbane Bears this season. Well, that must be all speculation at this stage because uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be making comments to Jeff or anyone else until the AFL investigation is over because uh, things could change it pretty quick uh, when the findings come out. Buxy, Buxy. There's a bit to unpack there, isn't there? <laughs> Where are we going to start? I, I spoke that slowly. I wanted everyone to finish my sentence. <laughs> Every time that I spoke, yeah. And Bucks, the personal number. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put my hand up for that. I'm going yeah. to guess uh, that car got keyed a fair bit. Is that... that was before anyone really cared about me or knew me, so that was. And that, I think safe I recognised the model of that car. Is, is that a, uh, the old Mazda shit heap? <laughs> <laughs> Coupe, she's <laughs> she used to drive around town with bucks on the back of your car. The best gag that my teammates played, they actually stole it, and I had to make up a, a cardboard bucks number plate <laughs> and wrap it, wrap it in glad wrap so it wouldn't get too wet. And I just stuck that, yeah, it was no good. It's a good idea unless you're thinking of knocking over a 7 Eleven or something. <laughs> but then, then I think they'll be on to you. Um, now, you're a confident young man, and uh, <laughs> at one stage, and I, I'm going to ask you about this, because you wrote about it in your own book, your nickname at the time, um, and none of us are really happy with our, our nicknames, but yours was Fig Jam. Do you remember who <laughs> got... <laughs> You'll work it out. Um, do, you, do you remember who gave it to you and the yep. circumstances in which you got it? Yeah, it was John Anderson, yep. um, who writes for the Herald Sun, and the first time I ever heard it, I actually didn't hear it, I read it. So it yep. was when he put it in the paper. I heard it quite frequently after that. <laughs> and um, yes. Did it bother you? I mean, that's what nicknames, I suppose, are designed. It, did. it did, actually. Yeah, as a young bloke, it did, because... Did um, you put that on your passport? Was it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I avoided, no, I avoided that part of it. But yeah, it did for a little while, and I copped it for, I haven't heard it for a long time, no, and yeah. until after tonight. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, so thanks for that. That's, Sorry that's, that's a bit rich coming from Mick. That's his number plate, by the way. <laughs> Well, you, you know Sam's. Do you know Sam's the nickname? The Orchid. Do you, do you, the, orchid. You the Orchid. The Orchid. Do you know? Do we, they all know. Do, do you all know how? Do we all, do all know how? Why would they call you the Orchids, man? <laughs> I was called the orchid because, according to my teammates, I needed absolutely perfect conditions to thrive. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Let's move on. Let's move on. Do you remember him from Collingwood? No. So he was a no. from Collingwood? No, so you guys never crossed paths? No. Were you a Collingwood? I think he was there, I just don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, the, I, the, the club wasn't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> and, uh, well, speaking of that, mate, uh, you'll, you'll forever be known as a Collingwood great. But, Going from that one year in Brisbane to Collingwood, how, how talk, talk to us about that. Well, I, was, I loved my year in Brisbane um, because it was the first opportunity I had to play in the AFL and Robert Walls was my coach and absolutely have great respect for him, even though he's a Carlton man. But, um, <laughs> but you know, I've, I had uh, a lot of good people teach me a lot of very important things in, that, in that pe the period, the year that I was at Brisbane. And the Brownlow. What about the Brownlow, mate? You won a Brownlow in 2003. The Pinnacle? Congratulations. The Pinnacle? Top no. chest. Yeah, no, <laughs> In pretty good company too. Uh, Mark Rusciuto and Adam Goods. I mean, there's, there's three uh, top shelf players there. None of whom seems very happy to have won a brown one. Um, here you are. Here's Goodsy. We have a three-way brown medal tie. 
Look at him. Yeah, yeah. Cheer up. When, although, that, when your name gets announced, I'm sure you'll fire up, Bucks. Collingwood Captain Nathan Buckley. <laughs> hey, is that another example of you not enjoying the journey? I, I, yeah, I'd say that that's a pretty, pretty good, pretty good example of that. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we had a grand final, the you know, five or six days later, was probably part of it. I, I definitely didn't have a sip of that champers, but. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Should have cried, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great moment. Yeah. But, but uh, what, what was what was Ruin Goodsy's excuse? I don't know. Good point. <laughs> Seemed fairly sombre out there. Mm. For... And, but what a tri what a what a trifecta, by the way. The it three of you, it's, it's a great, and they all went on to great things. You've gone on to coach Collingwood. Of course, Adam Goods went on to win another Brownlow and become Australian of the Year. Yep. And of course, Mark Ooh. Mark Rashida had, has had enormous success with the Jim Smoing franchise. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's never forget that. Hi, Hi Rui. <laughs> That's every week you slag, yeah. slag him off right now. Hey, you've given us a great joy over the years and uh, great entertainment. Uh, some of your stills are my favourite. Come have a look at this is a shot of Bucks. <laughs> Check out the Norgs on Bucks. <laughs> What's going on there? Now, are you playing or have you I retired? I'm comfortable with that comment. <laughs> when you, when you, can I touch them? No. <laughs> oh, oh. Are you playing then? Have you retired? That was. <laughs> Not there's anything wrong with that, mate. No, mate. Um, 2006 that was, um, and I got very fit, but <laughs> didn't play a lot of footy after that. No, yeah. did you get too big? I mean, you had hamstring issues, and you have to put a lot of weight. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, was that part no, of what? No, no, no. no I actually, body weight wise, mate, I was actually not as heavy as right. I had been yeah. for most of my career. Just really cut. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, yeah. What about no, no. the time? What about the time you raced in the Sydney to Hobart? That was that was <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I remember we've got some pictures here. Oh, hey. <laughs> a dead set. <laughs> Split my dax. <laughs> about two hours after that. Pulling down on the rope, that was my job, split the ducks in the Sydney Harbour. Oh, there you go. Did your... Welcome to Fantasy Island. That's unbelievable. That's fantastic. And my favourite, it, it, it is my favourite, and all the boys did this year, at the Lone Ranger, everyone got involved in the Man for All Seasons calendars, and this is my favourite shot, you reclining. <laughs> On the phone, like, uh, is, is, that, is that how you ring down to the boundary line and the coach's box bucks in? <laughs> Why are you on the phone? Whose idea was that? And once again, where's your shirt, man? <laughs> I seem to have spent a fair bit of time without my shirt on, but no, mum, mum called and I just had to take it. We should, we should thank uh, Eddie McGuire for sending those shirts. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had been lost, they'd been lost to history, so... Hey, um, you spent a year in between coming back to coaching and after you're playing. You spent a year, at least one year, full full time in the media. Um, this was the moment you signed the contract with um, John O at seven to be yep. part of the team here, and yep. they get you to do things when you sign on that you might not otherwise do. Hey. Did you think? Did you think that the media was? You really knocked that thing. Did you think that the media was going to be a long term thing? Because you only last, you only did a year, and then you went to coaching. Uh, I had the couple. So, yeah, couple so, so, oh, hang on, he started with AFL squadron. Let's yeah, not. Let's let's not. <laughs> did you get anything out of it? Like, did you I, get? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, I really did enjoy it, and and um. I didn't know at that stage whether I had a passion um, to coach and then discovered sort of coaching some of the, the under-16 the, the under 16 Vic countryside and doing a little bit of work with the, the National Academy that I actually had that passion to coach and um, jumped in pretty quick after that. Hey, it was great to see you kicking over the seven logo out the front of the building. They mm. make a few of us do that. Did you remember you... you... <laughs> Go at it. Oh, yeah, I had it. Well, Bucks did it because the set, the giant seven. Yeah, I had it. Hang on, you've got to change your heart here. Yeah, What's I, that? I knew I couldn't get there, so I just changed tap Bucks. He'd be happy with it on the run. Oh, oh, I can you hang around? We might catch up with Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald as well on the other side of this. We're here next to the front. Those moments when, you know...
devastation mm. descends. And you've got family, you've got the team, you've got the broader. Co what, what's There's your a bit job? To deal with that, as the it? coach? Yeah, what? thanks for bringing that up. Again. Yeah, no, <laughs> did you did you get an understanding of what your job is at a time like that in the moment? You, I guess you probably don't actually know until it until it arrives. I oh, think the connection that you have with your your club and all the people within it, so players and staff, is is crucial and that's important. Uh, I actually said to the players after the game, I didn't know how to lead them. I didn't know how what to say in this moment that was going to make a difference or yeah, yeah, was yeah. the right thing to say. And sometimes that's the perfect thing to say is you, you, you're not sure, you know, what the what the message needs to be. But you know, I, I love. I love the club, clearly. I love our group at the moment and, um, you yeah, know, love coaching and, and the position that I hold as much as I ever have. Oh, can I, I know we've got to get to this. Can I just say, it's one, of, it's one of the dirtiest tricks that the Collingwood Football Club has ever played on the, on the football community to have a coach that is, most, is well respected. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's totally confusing. Yeah, it is confusing. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I wanted to say that. I'm just saying. Yeah, quite right. But, uh, Oh, luckily for us, they've still got their president, so that's all right. <laughs> you know what I would have said? You know what I would have said? Does that mean the roast is over Fuck of me? Uh, is that, no, no, we'll move on. We'll move on. No, 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 no. We've got more for you. <laughs> <laughs> Onward and upward for you. Hey, one of our great friends on this program and a great friend of yours, of course, is Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald, and he's been good enough to join us on the show. Fitzy, come on in. Where are you, big fella? What are you doing? <laughs> G'day, Andy. G'day, boys. You've sent me to dangerous territory, guys. And you know what I was fearing for my life today? Until the pies got up. Um, and I'm OK now because I'm in the house of a very prominent Collingwood cheer squad member. Can you please put your hands together for the beautiful Vula? Hi, Vula. Hello. I'm very, very good. Now, Vula, you're here with your clan here as well, and they, they're celebrating. They've already had a few drinks, guys, after today's win. But we need to talk about the famous incident in the grand final last year, and this is when the Collingwood boys ran out there. Now, luckily, there weren't too many superstitious ones because this is where the banner went. Every thought, everyone thought, this is it. Uh, it depressing what's going to happen here. And there was a beautiful moment when Bucks went over and he consoled Paula. Let's have a listen. Hey, hey, move on, move on. Next thing, move on. Next thing. Oh, next thing. Oh, next thing. Oh, next thing. Have a look at Vula there, you wounded little magpie. Have a look at your Vula. <laughs> First of all, there's a couple of things I want to ask you about Vula. I mean, bloody, how hard is it to put a banner together? It's some great paper and some tape. So what, what happened to the banner on the day? It fell apart. It just fell apart? Not, not enough sticky tape. And do, do you know what? This is so funny. <laughs> Behind the bar, she actually has some of the banner. <laughs> and I, I've said to a Vula, to, I'd forget about that. I'd douse it with unleaded and just light it up, Vula, because you've got to get rid of that. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to ask you about as well, I know you love Bucks. He's on the desk right now. This is your opportunity. You speak to him all the time. But how did you feel when, when he left the team and he went over to console you? I mean, how did you feel? I didn't even know it was Bucks. I, everyone was tapping me and calling me and saying, let's fix it, let's fix it. I'm going, it can't be fixed, it's gone. Then someone taps you from behind. I was ready to say, pissed off, yeah, yeah, yeah. go away, yeah. Le leave me alone. At this time, like, do not touch me. And I look around, it's Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worse. Yeah. You know, when Bucks was there, but... All right. Well, you know what, Vola? It's happened to the best of us. Probably not to that extent and probably not in front of three million people. <laughs> when you think about it, it was a bloody clanger, wasn't it, Vola? But, um, but, but you know what? We just thought we, were, we wanted to help you out on the front bar and we wanted to give you a few things to help you out with your next banner. And the first thing, we've got some extra, extra bloody strong tape. And so that, that'll put that together as well. And I think I've got something else here that I think every Collingwood supporter should get when they pay their membership and that is a, a, a dictionary <laughs> and, and also Paula, I've been around your house and in the bar here and I've seen every Collingwood player but there's one that you don't have I've got something very special for you. I've got a framed headshot of the most influential Collingwood player of all time from his under 19 days, Mr Sam Payne. <laughs> Yep, signed. As you can see, you really are a Collingwood man. Have a look at that handwriting. 
<laughs> now, Paula, also, also as well, we need to talk about this. There was a story that you did last year, Paula, and let's talk about this bar and the shrine that you have here. But there were some bar stools that you obtained for your, uh, for your bar. Let's have a look at the story from last year. You've got a beautiful bar at the back. Yes. Where did you get the, the bar stools from? From Victoria Park. How did you get them? Stole them. <laughs> Stole them. You, you're just a perfect little Collingwood kleptomaniac, aren't you? And that's what we love about you, Vula. Now, I need to ask you, is, is that the only thing that you've stolen for this bar? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Nothing no, else? Nothing else. Never. Because, Vola, I do need to question that huge print that you have over in the corner there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the reason why is because there's only one of those, and that's usually up in Andy's bathroom. So where the hell did you get that from? <laughs> do you use it as a dartboard? That's a mine. All right. That's a mine. Guys, that's it. For the, I can hear an alarm going off on an ankle bracelet over there. Back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> thanks, Vula. Thanks, Vitsi. Uh, uh, magnificent. Thanks ever so much to Vula for uh, letting us into a beautiful, beautiful world. I, I wonder where that thing was going to end up. Um, yeah, she's a good sport. Heart and soul, isn't it? That's yeah. Yeah. Hey, I've got to ask you quickly, can I, about the succession plan, <laughs> which has come full circle and now it's, it's come to its ultimate conclusion, has which it? is, okay. well, it will be once you've bag of premiership, I suppose. Um, can I take you back to the moment we were first introduced to the succession plan in a press conference held by Eddie Maguire? Please. The Magpies Dream Team. Lofty aspirations, even loftier comparisons. Just as uh, John F. Kennedy decided in 1962 that uh, the Americans would go to the moon and they arrived there in 1969, there has to be a statement at some stage and a plan put in position to actually go at things and to think grandly. Yeah, no pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is it true Comparing that... the succession yeah. plan at Collingwood to landing man on the moon. Well, there's, there was a seven-year gap for JFK, and yep. it's been ten years since that state. We've got some work to do. Take... Okay. To, you but to be as honest, right. as, no, no, as honest as you can, did Mick make you earn your stripes maybe a little harder than one or two other coaches around well, the no, I, I've heard that speculated, yep. Yep. but no... Look, it's not I, true. I, 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 he makes... People earn their stripes, and and really, that's when you're in an elite environment in a high pressure workplace. You need to trust and have um, people ready to stand up to do their jobs. And Mick made no apologies that he was going to have his staff and players absolutely ready for the contest. And that's I felt like he was just um, having me ready to go okay. as right. much as anyone. Yep. Okay. Well, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I did. I did I, just say that. I think, <laughs> I think that this um, this vision of you returning after a big win from Perth, I reckon this actually sums up your your relationship perfectly. <laughs> the Hot Pies chartered jet touched down in Melbourne in the early hours. Mick didn't want to talk, but he did take the final seat on the bus, leaving the club's most precious body stranded on the footpath. <laughs> You're not assistant coach, you're a player. You need to, like, get home. Rehab. I did yeah. too, yeah. Spend the night at the airport Hilton, did we? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, can I, can I want to quickly say something? I can yeah. stop you here because so this is something we can enjoy. It's a bit of an I told you so. There weren't many people who got on board early with this, but you and I oh. correctly identified Mason oh. Cox... <laughs> As a future champion, of, as, as a future champion of the game, when he burst on the scene, I said that man will go on to do big things on the big stage. Even when he was playing basketball in Texas, I went, he's got something. <laughs> do you think? You got, are you going to play that one? Uh, Would you like me to? Could you please? Well, just in case. Just in I case. I want to see some proof of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got some proof here. This is this is Mick. In case you haven't seen it, this is Mick's comments about Mason Cox in the lead up. Oh, right. In the lead up to the preliminary final last year. This could be the biggest game Mason Cox never gets a kick in. <laughs> get stuck. No idea. <laughs> we, no, honestly, we, we use that bit of vision. We use that bit of vision and it inspired Mason to his performance. Magnificent. Yeah. Were you even aware of it? Thank did you. you. Did you read it in? No, no. <laughs> hey, um, Bucks, one of our favourite segments on the show is Fresh from the Archives. Do you 
remember singing the song after the game when you were joined by Hollywood star Rob Lowe? See, this segment is basically the whole show. Like, everything is an archive. I don't know why you why, why have you got a separate segment for it. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's, it's an extra ad for CUB. Good point. That's a really good point. Can I show you? Yeah, yeah, can you show me? Do, 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 do you remember Rob Lowe? Do you remember, do you remember Rob Lowe? Love the boy. You don't seem happy about this. No. And Rob Lowe barks, nah. No. No. Come on, uh, is it just a thing you don't think anyone from St. Almost Fire should be in the, <laughs> in, in the circle singing the song? Uh, that, that, uh, that's secret football of space. Is is that what, is I, that I, yes, there's probably further evidence that I needed to take a chill pill. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't like that. Oh, no, I no. Bucks, well, the um, president is the president and he dragged him in and himself yes. <laughs> into the song. Yes. So, and we won, so that's all. Mate. That's the main thing. Right. <laughs> uh, You've done a bit of television before, haven't I you? I have, yeah. yeah. An idea about keeping the ball moving. That's right. <laughs> we're talking about Eddie, weren't we? <laughs> That's all we're doing, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. how's your relationship with Eddie? It's good. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Well, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to say... Guys, guys, emotions are running high. Uh, yeah, no, right uh, what's your, what's your line? No, we just <laughs> talk footy. <laughs> <laughs> we talk footy down here. I don't no, do the gangs up there. That's what happens. Happens. I don't care where it is. This is not scripted. This show. <laughs> <laughs> last year, what what a fairy tale! I'll get there. Don't worry. Oh, what a fairy tale! Fairy tale it was last year, and of course we saw mixed comments in the lead up to the preliminary final. Mm. But your your president Eddie had some very strong words about the scheduling mm. of the matches preliminary final weekend on Triple M. If you no, flip the, the preliminary finals, every team gets a seven day break. For God's sake, mate, you're going to disadvantage three teams going into a grand final. And can I just say, you and Eddie were absolutely on the same page. <laughs> now the football department doesn't have a problem with it. <laughs> You left him hanging out to dry there, Bucks. I did, and I'll probably get a call. <laughs> <laughs> side by side's not the motto for nothing, Ed Collin. We don't worry about that. Hey, we we are. We do appreciate it. It's a joy for us to have you on the show. We hope you come back again. We suspect you probably won't, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> congratulations today and onward and upward. Good luck Thanks. for the rest Thank you, Bucks. Please bring us having on the show. Uh, after the break, time for Mitch Multi. Don't go anywhere. With us here in the front bar, uh, we have a brewery for his Carlton Draft. Get involved in the show, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, feedback, welcome, any of our social media platforms. We've got them all here on the front bar. Right. We like to use them. Um, and get involved, please. Uh, time now for one of our other favourite segments, Mix Multi. All oh, right, yes. You got one last week, one from uh, four one last from four. week. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Could you just a bit of support for this segment for <laughs> occasionally? Wouldn't yeah. have thought so. <laughs> That's good. A team player. Be all the good be going in the same direction. All right, uh, let's go. Uh, first leg this week of the multi. First up, have a look at this bit of play by young blue Harry Mackay. Look at this. Uh, picks it up on the wing. Takes possession. First of many bounces. Bang. Let's have another. One, two. Three and waltzing in Four. to an open goal. And yeah, I'd like to wager that would have been point of the week if point of the week wasn't such a shit out segment. We axed it. <laughs> It's his segment. Zing. Um, no, 
<laughs> no, <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't have it. Why would you attack point of the I don't, it's too good personally. <laughs> you can't. Well, it was a debacle. That was. It was a great segment, Murray. Oh. I love the segment. Yeah. I love the, I, I voted for it to come back. I want it. I want point of the oh, week back. Would have struggled on AFL Squadron. You can't have it. <laughs> How about you take young Harry, who's a fine, fine player and a decent young man, uh, to be the first goal scorer against the Hawks, Danny Tazzy, and I'll give you eleven bucks. What I'll take that? it. Right away we go. Right. right up. <laughs> that I'm telling you now. These next three legs are going to struggle. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to cost. That's going to cost me. <laughs> hey, no, no, you'll get on board here. Have a look at this second leg. Check out the PM cheering on the Cronulla Sharks here and having a bit of a boogie. <laughs> Yes, Gomo. I'd like to wager that bloke uh, took his dancing lessons from this guy. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you sound like your child Jeez. was there, or that could have been really embarrassing for you. Can I have that? Uh, that vision's got to be destroyed. No, you can't have it. How about you take the Sharks at the line, which is plus four, against the Bronx, and I'll give you $1.90. I'll take it. All right. Right. Can I make an observation? <laughs> yes, please. It seems an interesting strategy, the first two legs of the multi, it's a turn on your own. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's every man for himself, I'm afraid. It's, it's, like, it's like the multi's lost its soul. <laughs> oh, that would be presumed it had one in the first place. <laughs> mate. Hey. Hey. Third lead, have a look at Ruffy's foot. You'll love this. Have a look at Ruffy's footwear here, walking into a presser this week. It's a chic look downstairs. It's socks. It's sandals. Good on him. I'd like to wager that's actually a formal look in Lee and Gather. <laughs> I'd like to wager, like wager he couldn't find his Crocs. <laughs> he probably is. You got another one? No, I'm done. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give it to you, but how about you take the Hawks? Oh. Take the Hawks to beat the Blues, 1-39, to 39, I'll give you two bucks. Not a lot of value in it, Andy, but I suppose I'll have to take it. Here we go, let's beat this baby home. Uh, have a look at this guy launching a drive and have a listen to his response. <laughs> I'd like to wager. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I'd like to wager that, that when Scomo saw me, this was his reaction. <laughs> I got nothing. Oh. Said, can I, I've said this before. You used to be one of the. You used to be a comedy great in this country. <laughs> and now you're just like it's funniest time videos or something. <laughs> I can't. thought that was good. Andy, can I have it? No, you can't. But no. have it. Day Scott, they're playing in the uh, teams event in the Zurich Classic. You're going to have your doll 62. Bag it finish, up. What do we got? Finish in the top 10. Right, what do we got? Get on, oh, 70, 70 bucks. bucks. Get on you board. Like that cannot lose. Well, it can. <laughs> this will change your life. No, it probably won't. Uh, to get on Mix Multi, jump Scott on the Sports Bet app. Look for Mix Multi in the Mega Mix section of the app. And please, don't listen to him. Please gamble responsibly because it can lose. No, have a go. And based on form, <laughs> it probably will. Don't go anywhere. Served this great nation on Anzac Day, Mickey. To return service men and women, yep. this is to you. Thank you very much for your service. I know you've had a lot to do with Soldier On. You're, um... If you want to get involved or donate some money, there's a fantastic organisation called Soldier On uh, I'm involved with. They do fantastic work. Uh, with families yeah. and return servicemen and women, they, it's an incredible organisation. Uh, just get involved. You're, you're Look in them up and see and just see what they're up to. You'll you're really involved with them. What, what is your involvement in them? Ah, oh, you know, I just kind of <laughs> siphon money from them. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I, I host a few of their functions and I and I do stuff. Uh, what do you do? I siphon money from them. As well. <laughs> Um, they are a great organisation. No, Please yeah. get involved. Yep. They're fantastic. Hey, and also I want to salute on this very special day the Buglers. All yep. the Buglers out well there. It's a big day for the Buglers. Well, well done. And the bloke today, the G, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 to whoever you are, the bloke of the MCG today. You know. Yeah, they're all good. Beautiful. I want to show you a clip. Just 
remember, if you're next to the bugler while he's bugling, there is a responsibility that the camera's on you. Don't try and get a sneaky look at the big screen. Have a look at the guy on the right. Yeah, you've got to have some respect. Bugler gang, bugler gang about the business and don't look. Don't do it. Don't do it. Here we are. Don't. No! Oh, no. Don't. Don't. <laughs> it's not about you, it's about the bugler. Uh, well done. Uh, we to don't... all the buglers, that is it. We are done. Um, thanks to Fitz, thanks to Vula, and of course, thanks to Nathan Buckley for being part of the show. Thanks to the audience for coming. Thanks for watching. Don't forget next week. What about this for next week? Paddy Dangerfield and Nikki Winmar on the show next week. You know